Hello there friends, uh, I think I've got the wrong camera, <laughs> hello there friends, Steve here, uh, let me just switch again to another perspective. Hello there friends and welcome to the crazy world, let me just turn these uh, things off. Yeah, It's good to be here, I'm not late, I just gave you everyone time to get in, um, as you know, like punctuality is, is good if someone's waiting for you you're all sat at home so it's uh i think to myself just relax steve relax all of this pressure of the world so yes it's great to be here live i'm steve this is the 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 the, 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 the mystery show it's just a broadcast it's just a name we can find it each other with so it, it has been another crazy week, hasn't it? I've got a candle burning in the background. I don't know if you remember back in the day. Um, I, had a, I had a candle on the show. It's always a, a bit of a difficult thing because of the glare and, and where to put it so you don't knock it over. But I thought I'll just put a candle in the back. Um, a candle's a, a, a good um, like focus point. So it's nice, but obviously be careful if you if you do use candles. Sort of imagine if it was if you was to fall asleep or it falls over or whatever, what's going to happen, you know? And so you put it somewhere where it's not going to burn anything in its surroundings. But you know, candles are really great. Um, it's nice to be here. It's, we're here live on the internet, and I wanted to talk on a, a few points. Where's me? I got some notes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, no, even more, actually, it just seems. I wanted to talk about mass psychosis. It sounds a bit scary. Um, I wanted to talk about the news is just an opinion um, and talk about social networking in, like, madness and spirituality and, and, and that, and that what it, role it plays in all of this. Um... So I hope you can hear me well, it seems you can. Greetings to everyone in the chat room. Hello there, Pete, Cookie, Paula, uh, Rick. And Robert. And anyone who's watching and lurking, you're welcome to, you're welcome to, um, <laughs> yeah, nice one. You're welcome to just chill out and just watch. I mean, it is nice. It is really nice to know, especially at the beginning of a show. You know, there's like, oh, we can hear you, we can see you. Um, they're all one hand clapping, so to speak. Um, to be honest, it's, it, like I often say this at the beginning of a show. I guess it, uh, you know, it's a cr it's become a crazy routine. But you know, the title is about the crazy routine of society. And nevertheless, e even though I have the the, the the skills, the minerals to, to to like withstand the forces of madness that are, that, that are out in the world, I still have like pretty crazy weeks. And this week has been a, a phenomenally crazy week. Um, so maybe I can sort of get a bit of a, a, a rain check in the chat room. Um, I don't know if I've ever had a week like this. It hasn't been, it has not been the, the most difficult week of my life, for sure. Um, but there's something been very, very, like, to me, this week has been like being, being on um, some kind of psychedelic drug. I've even thought to myself, you know, are they putting something in the water? You know, is there some kind of 5G technology been turned on? You know, and then you can already hear the giggles from left right. Oh, conspiracy theorist, conspiracy theorist, conspiracy. You know, when you turn on the, the mainstream media, conspiracy theorist, conspiracy theorist. We're going we're gonna to fuck you up. <laughs> You're a conspiracy theorist. You know, so you're like, okay, I'm feeling fucking trippy. What the hell? <laughs> you know what the hell? Um, it's gaslighting, and is there another terminology for gaslighting? Uh, for example, like you know, when all of you the friends around you or people around you are all going crazy the same, or all convincing you that you're crazy, that you start to go crazy, and you're not actually. You're totally rational, but your surroundings have gone crazy. I don't really need to to 
dive into detail on on that because I'm sure you're all very very on board with this aspect of the fact that that, that society could just be driving you mad you could just be one of the sane ones and everybody around you is going crazy or everyone's going crazy in their own way and it's affecting you you know what i mean so um so maybe like like it, for those of you who want to like just sit back and chill you're welcome if you can give us that little bit of feedback though you know it's like if you've had a, if you've had an exceptionally strange psychedelic kind of week uh let us know in the chat with a with a one you know if it's been a physically difficult week you know type in two if it's been a normal week type in zero like you know not normal but like always as it always like the, the, the same old same old madness so a zero for the same old madness, one for it's been very psychedelically strange, or two, it's been physically strange. You could put a three in if you want to define a new category. <laughs> That's what we're like here. Freedom and stuff. I'll probably be... Probably be... Probably... I will probably, probably be playing a song. Not nada. Nice one, James. Nothing like just the same old madness. It's hard to know, isn't it? Physical madness. You're gaslighting me, aren't you? <laughs> you know, it's like 0 0.5. So halfway between normality and psychedelic. Um, uh, suppose there was a war and no one, sh nobody showed up. Hello there, earache. And hello there, Dinny. And hello there, James. Too physically. I mean, it, it, it could be... Um, <laughs> that's your baseline, Pete. Yeah, nice. It, it, it could be with me that the psychedelic effect is coming from the physical effect because I've got no... Like, as you know, last week I had a little bit of a... a little bit of a physical effect. So maybe that was the, the start of things. Um... What you've been taking, Steve? Actually, nothing. That's probably the, that's probably the uh, the big problem, really. Nothing. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. Especially, you know, when times when when times come and change. Um, I don't like to take stuff. You know, I like to just keep my like you know drink the same amount of coffee, and if I'm you know I smoke the same amount of cigarettes, and I try and have the same amount of sleep. Try, try and get my, like, try and follow the habit that I know the best works for me. You know, sometimes I'm out of habit. And, um, and then I think maybe it's like I've changed something in my, like, mechanics. You know, like, if you change something in a car, you just tweak something, it's going to change the, the whole way the car drives, isn't it? But for me, for me, maybe it's been a physical thing, and I've had like you know, like sometimes when you've got a cold, a flu. Oh, got my hair out. Uh, when you've got a cold or a flu, sometimes you feel like you're tripping, don't you? You feel like you, you you're on like magic mushrooms or something, you know. What do I what do I mean? You like you 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 your thoughts are racing. And you can't stop thoughts. Like, you, you'll always end up at a different thought and you'll find an association and you'll get another thought and maybe it leaves you down a dark road. Or if you start feeling scared or depressed and you're going down another road that leads you to feeling more, like, euphoric and, and like, like, that things are absurd and laughable. And you end up with these different types of reactions. You, you, you kind of see it when, when you know, like for example, you get someone who says, "Oh, I'd like to have a, like to have a, a like smoke some cannabis," you know, but I've never done it before. Can I try some? And um, you know, years ago when you was young, you'd, you'd you'd see that, you know what I mean? Like people would come, ah, oh, yeah, you know, and, and you'd say, well, "I wouldn't bother really," you know, like, "Oh, I really want him." Oh, all right then, let's like. Smoke, <laughs> you know, no, like, try again, it's not doing anything, 
It's not doing anything. <laughs> you know, they'll start laughing and like, oh, that's funny, look. It's like, yeah, you, you, you're stoned, mate. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm not. What do you mean? What are you doing? What, what do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm so... <laughs> You know, like getting into a panic then. And you can, like, obviously then you pull them out of it. It's like, oh, just chill out, man. You know, you put on some Bob Marley. Um, crack open a beer or whatever. You go into relaxation mode. It's like, go, let, let go. You you know, you're not... Take the, the stick out of your ass. You know, just let go. <laughs> you know, chill out. Find your neutral space. To be honest, like, when, when I was 18, 17... Where we can, where I come from, in England, there was a lot of drugs about. There was a lot of LSD on the street, and there's mushrooms. Mushroom season, you'd see mushrooms painted on the pavement in chalk coloured, and you know it was a mushroom season. And there was people out drying mushrooms and selling mushrooms and eating mushrooms. Mixing it with all kinds of things. You know, I found that one of the worst things was like the pharmaceuticals that people were getting. They'd go to the doctor and like, oh, I've got a really bad backache. I need some of uh, that demezepan stuff because you get five quid a pill on the street for it, <laughs> you know. Um, especially if you drink it, have it with, uh, with alcohol. You know, like it says on the back, do not take with alcohol. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's try that. You know, I saw a hell of a lot of dangerous experimentation in my youth. And to be honest, I was a, I, I was a guitar player before I left home. I guess that's a good way of saying it. I was a guitar player before I left home. Or let's say I was into music and playing guitar. And so for me, it, it, like the guitar came first. If I was drinking alcohol and then my fingers wouldn't work anymore i thought well what's the fucking point in drinking if you can't play guitar you know what is the point of the, you know what's the point of drinking if you can't play guitar so for me it was always like okay i'll allow a little bit of an experiment i'm 18 <laughs> you know i'm able to take this that or the other with it within reason observing the people around me you know just, just trying little things not everything and seeing if I could still play guitar, you know how it is, you, you know, so, so back in that day, there was a lot of experimentation with drugs, and it was 17, 18, 19, God knows, you know, around that age, and you look at the 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds of today, and, you know, it's like, I don't know what to think, because I don't, like, follow them around, and, and like, you know, going to places where I would have been, you know, we, we, like, around that age, there was nowhere to go, really. You didn't necessarily have a home. You might have had, like, a, a shared house, a, a bedsit, a Wohngemeinschaft. Um, maybe you still lived at home and, and like, you just needed to, to find a place to, to chill with your mates at the night. So you'd, you'd end up at the, at the train station or the bus stop or under the bridge around the back of the, the, the shops, you know. It was always somewhere. You, or you'd go down to the pub. Or go to the youth, not youth centre, like a leisure centre, the like sports centre or something. Go ice skating. So back then, I, you know, I remember... I tried to, like, not take too many drugs. I was interested in playing guitar. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd smoke a little bit of weed and, until, I, you know, until the guitar playing was, like, there. You know, it's like, okay, if I smoke any more, I won't be able to play guitar. So, you know, it was always that. It was the same with, you know, magic mushrooms and stuff. It's like, fucking hell, that's weird. You know, some amazing experiences on these drugs. But at the same time, it's like sometimes really difficult to keep your, your, your mind focused. And that's why a lot of people take drugs and just act silly. You know what I mean? So, so like, say, you and your mate, and you take some magic mushrooms, <laughs> and you start like, oh, you know, has anything happening yet? Are you seeing any colours? No, I'm not seeing it. Oh, I thought I saw a hallucination, but it was just a, a flash of light. And then s s suddenly 
it creeps up on you. You know, you, you you see something and it just it seems to you weird, and you think, hang on a second, my perception of the world's changing, and it can be really scary. It can be really scary. And obviously it's a physical thing, you know, back to the uh, zero, or one and two. You know, the, the, um, the, the question I asked you, you know, uh, do you think that things are just the same old madness with zero? Or do you think that um, things are a bit like psychedelic as one? Or things are more physically weird? That's two, you know. And I think that, for example, if, you, if you're taking magic mushrooms, you'd say it was a... a a physical thing, wasn't it? Something that's happening to your body, but at the same time, it affects your mind. Just like you, like if you get a, a fever or something, it can change the way you think. And the mind is—we're not the mind, you know. This is a big lesson to make, isn't it? But you know, we need the mind; otherwise, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation. We need the, the memories. We need the, the short-term memory, the long-term memory, the mathematical part. It's like. A, a central processing unit in a computer and we associate it with so much just like in a computer you forget you're looking at a screen you forget you're interacting with a computer that obviously you forget that you're looking at the screen and you're involved what's on the screen with all with, you know, with all fairness I and mean, you have to so so that's perception we forget that our own mind is like the computer. We be become so identified with the mind. This is back to identity politics. So you, be you become so identified with the mind that when the mind doesn't work like you expect, it makes you feel there's something wrong with the world. You know. And a lot of it is optical as well because our, our like, the, like, we see the world, don't we? We see television, we see images, well, there's like advertising and, and like video. The, the visual realm is something that's really, really powerful in the way that it can, it, it can deceive us in a different way to audio. This is where the, the, Luc the Lucifer principle comes in. You know, the, the idea that if, if it, it's your fault if you see it wrong, isn't it? You know, like, who's responsible for the way you see the world? I can't change the way you see the world, so I can't be responsible for the way you see the world. I can't be responsible for the way you hear my words. And and I will play a tune. Um, but, but a lot of people can play tunes. A lot of people have got good voices. And I've got stuff to say. And... I sometimes wonder whether silence is golden or talking is golden. But for one thing I don't like is discussion. And I realise this about myself. And it's not something I like, you know, it's like I don't like discussion for me. I don't like necessarily having discussions about certain topics. You know, we sit down, watch the television, get flooded with news and media information that goes into our brain and then we identify with our brain so much that we think that that's us. We think we're living in that world that's come from a TV screen. And when you snap out of it, you realise that you've been sat in a room for maybe 20 years staring into a, a, into a plasma screen, which is fine, which is fine. But if you forget that fact, you, you, you can get a really, really big shock when you real you realise the truth, you know it it will go into the stomach. You know at the point where you you start feeling almost like your stomach is a part of your brain, then you know that that, that it's like really quite powerful. The, like your mind has begun to to to, to take over it, your existence to the point where your your stomach, which is the centre of existence, you know that like solar plexus and stomach and that lower area is the primal area. We need to eat, we need to have sex, you know, like at least once, or somebody does, a few people, to keep the human race going. So you have these really, really fundamental things about life. 
And that changes the way we behave. That's the way changes the way the world reacts to us. It changes the way we talk, the way we the, the way we think the world thinks we are. You know, it's like what do I think, you think, I think, you think. You know, it goes off into an absolute mindfuck, really. And so, like, imagine you just go absolutely insane and you, you, you forget everything and you can't understand anything anymore, then it doesn't really matter what, what the new world order would be or, or the, 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 the crises with war or anything. Nothing really matters. You know, at the point where you lose your mind is the point where... We're, 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 it's lost, isn't it? You know, like, for example, we're talking about, let's like, say, democracy versus dictatorship. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll build up a little bit of excitement and I'll play a tune at this point. And I'll just write that down on a piece of paper where we left that. This bit of paper, yeah. Democracy versus dictatorship. And I'll play a tune and I will have a, 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 a bit of a longer blast through the chat. Ellie one, Ellie one. <laughs> I have to say that. So I'm, I think the technology forces us to try and accelerate beyond our own ability. Um, I, will, I will have a quick look in, in the chat. Staying grounded, they can't hack our reality. Yeah, I like the word hack in that sense. Our minds remain our own. Shrooms gave a glorious glow. Yeah, I'll play. I tell you what, I will play a tune and then I'll, I'll blast back into the chat. So if I've missed anything really important that you've said, uh, drop back in and I'll took the chat room on the screen so you can see where I am in the chat and that. Um, but a tune's always good to warm up in it. Yeah, I can't play that one, but I'll play it in a bit. Um, see what we come up with. Let's, uh, whoops. Hey, we could have that one, actually. Let's have that one. I've got two of me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to get me uh, ch chat room on the screen, don't I? Let me just quickly sort that out. Is that the one? No, that's not the one. There we go. Good old chat room on the screen there, so we're set up for that. Now, I'll play a tune and we'll have that other one later, that lovely video. Call that a, a teaser trailer. <laughs> yeah, look, Pete made a lovely video for that, for that tune that I made. Yeah, you, got, you can see the, can, the, the, the old candle there a little bit better. Um, Sometimes I neglect uh, some of these kind of tools, or I'll just call, I'll be totally um, funny about it and call them toys. Toys, because I, I like, you know, I think we have to be playful with matter, with, with, in the material realm, you know. This candle, it's like, symbolises fire for me. Um, we have water, earth and air. And if you if you are in a real trouble, like for example, if you uh, if you ever tried mushrooms, um, then I'll be looking in the chat to, at, at people's drug experiences in their youth. Um, if you've ever tried mushrooms and you got really stressed and and stuff like that, you find that like going outside into the nature, like sitting on the like laying on the grass or leaning against a tree, sitting by the water, you know, nowhere dangerous, <laughs> nowhere. Um, somewhere nice and safe, and somewhere where there's you know not far, like within shouting distance of humanity. 
Um, unless you're a bit of a savvy like me or an idiot that just goes out into the middle of the woods and, <laughs> you know. Um, anyway, I'm going to play this tune. This is called Sitting in the Grass for Too Long. But before I do that, because I'll be talking at some point about democracy versus dictatorship and drugs. Uh, not so much, like, like when we're talking about drugs, really, I'm going to be moving on to the idea of, of um, propaganda as being a drug, uh, mind control being equivalent to drug, you know, like we're talking about taking mushrooms, but turning on the television is, is, is sort of like taking the most chemical... Because, like, if, if you're taking a magic mushroom that's been taken from the forest or whatever, you can trust... I mean, you can't trust every mushroom. You know, the mushrooms can kill you. Don't just eat mushrooms. Um... But you know that what what's happening to you is is a, a part of something natural, you know. Whereas if you're taking something chemical that's been created in in a a modern lab, <laughs> notice the quip. Um, you've got all this co concoction of DNA changing bullshit, really. You know, it, it's freaky. It's freaky. You know, people wouldn't like. Yeah, I'm not taking LSD. I may jump out of a window and try and fly. <laughs> You know, but people change your DNA. <laughs> you know, ch change your eye colour. You know, and then like let's just just, just ma mass fucking vax the fucking planet. Oh, I'll go along with that. Safe and effective. <laughs> Protect the others. <laughs> go along with it all. You know, sorry to be a fucking 
like I'm having difficulties because like this is censorship you know we're supposed to be having a debate because that's what a democracy should be is we can talk about the stuff that we want to like um, elect and stuff but it's like we're not allowed to even fucking say anything without getting censored and chucked off YouTube so this is my channel my second channel you know I'm trying to build up an audience I'm a fuck I'm not really bothered anymore I'll calm down because it's nice to calm down. But I, I, you know, it's the point of it is, it's like I'm trying to make this real because uh, there's enough fakery online. There's enough fakery on all of this TikTok and Twitter and YouTube and Odyssey and Rumble, which makes me remember we're broadcasting on Rumble. So hello to everybody on Rumble. Uh, I don't think we are, are we? Are we broadcasting on Rumble? Is the stream even working? It is, actually. Yeah, hello, Steve. Oh, I'll press pause there. What else we got? Odyssey. Greetings to Odyssey. Are we, are we, is Odyssey up and running? Odyssey's up and running. But you see, we live in a, in a, um, a video on demand society. People demand stuff, don't they? People demand stuff. You know, it's like, you've, like, I know what people want. I know what people want. And, and I could work on that and get a really popular channel. But then I am what people want. What a load of fucking bollocks is that? And people who, who want to like work with me have to understand this. That I'm not up for that. I'm, I'm like here on this planet to, to observe and then to, to gather people together and then to tell them what... To, to tell them. You know, because the people on the television are just, they're just reading the script. And, and that script is just, just, just information that's pieced together and called an opinion. You know, I call that an opinion, but people call it, you know, the news. And then call my stuff an opinion. Yeah, it's my opinion that people have fucking died from the fucking stuff that people have been given. This is a really serious fucking thing. And I'm hearing a lot of people every day being really calm and trying to keep things together. And the greatest of respect to you all. The greatest to respect to you all who've lost friends and lost loved ones. And all because, you know, because of some turbo illness that came just, as it, just at the right timing. And then people still won't believe that. You know, I'm talking cryptologically because we can't even talk openly about it. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. I didn't want to smoke on tonight's show, but, uh, you know... This is why fucking people can't give up smoking. Because of the fucking bollocks that comes off propaganda, off television. The television is a fucking opinion. But when I say something that is my observation and experience, that is not opinion, that is observation. And I've observed a lot of people, and I see mass psychosis. I see thousands of people, millions of people. I see, you know, like tens of people or hundreds of people around me who are all going crazy in the same fucking way and don't realise it. They've all had the same magic mushroom or the same synthetic whatever it is, all the same trip, and they don't realise that some of us are not on that trip. You know, like when you walk into, and, and like there's some people who've been smoking weed and they're all laughing, giggling, looking at something. <laughs> you know, you know yourself when you've had, had a smoke and stuff, you could get silly and, and you can understand that you're in the same, same frame of mind. But when, you, when you're an outsider, you think that that person's insane. You know, but two people are laughing over, over a joke seem insane. But because you're on the same wavelength, you know, you've, you're on the same constitution... Um, you, in the same fasong, you're in the same state, then you, you feel, oh, yeah, we're in the same state, so therefore we're all right. And with what we've got going on is a mass psychosis. And anybody who steps out of that is in danger of being called crazy. You know, this is why, this is partly why I always take a, a quite a, a light approach to this whole New World Order Illuminati bollocks stuff. Because if you try and go into detail and serious, people will start calling you crazy. You know, if you actually, if you actually lay out the reality of things, people would go fucking insane. People would just not be able to understand the way reality works. I oh, know, Steve, that's just your opinion. Yeah, it will. It will just break the fuck apart. So I don't care if people think that that's my opinion. But I have to put in a caveat. 
caveat. I have to put in a warning. If you want to make it light and easy, you can like say it's a throwaway idea or whatever. I've been sat around, well, standing, moving around, observing the world, and then I come here and I risk my life. Because people are saying, you're not risking your life. I, I, you know, I know people who are targets. Targets of what? I don't know what. But if, like, obviously, there's a lot of people being silenced. And there's a lot of people with powerful voices being silenced. And there's a lot of people with a lot of power who could say something that haven't yet. These people, all of these powerful, like, people with any power, any form of leverage, will be silenced, um, gaslighted, pressurised, coerced, and made to feel crazy because of all the dumb fucks around them. Now, this makes me angry because there's, there's more and more people going insane and ending in, in asylums, in psychological care. And then you've got snobby people with a stick up their ass saying, oh, yeah, you know, they're, 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 they're to blame for themselves, believing in wacky conspiracy theories. No, we didn't. We just kept reason. It just so happened that like, reason was us like, you know, reason was usurped by a conspiracy thing. You know, the news. The news. The fucking news, you know, like you turn on the German television, and I'm sure it's the same in every country. I don't watch television much, and I only get to, you know, you don't generally get to see other nations' televisions because the propaganda is specific to the, the, the nation's former brain, brainwashing. So watching German TV, I turn on the popular news and see what the populace is doing. You know, taking the jab. Wearing the mask, sending money for weapons to peace, and you know, su supporting this, that, and the other, believing that CO2 will fuck you up. You know, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm swearing in that, hoping to just to, like to, to, to circumvent the, the, the algorithms of YouTube and AI. And anybody who doesn't believe me that there's that the, the system is rigged and stacked against people who want to speak out against the current government, you're just an idiot. You, you're just an idiot. So, like, I don't mind having a conversation. If you disagree with me, let's have that conversation. But just to stand there and think you know better because you've seen it on the news, it's just, it's just a mass psychosis that we've got to get out of. We're brothers and sisters, and I'm not against you. You're, you, you, like, essentially, the television is against my principles, our principles here. So if you support what's on TV, you, you obviously you're against humanity, it seems, if there's no discussion. Now, if we have a discussion, we can meet halfway, because some of the ideas are extreme on both sides. Oh, let's give all the kids puberty blockers. Let's just, you know, I, I'm, absolutely, I'm absolutely an advocate of integration. I'm absolutely an advocate of diversity. But, when it, but sometimes it just goes too far and it's fucking ignorant of the other side's like concerns. Like the vaccine. The vaccine, you know, it's like, like, are we, are we, have we admitted yet? Are we, are we admitted? Have we admitted or are you just going to like gaslight me and say, oh, no, Steve, it's not proven. You know, it's like, when are we going to admit this? When are we going to stop gaslighting each other? When are we, it's like, oh, you, well, you know, there's a separation. It's just, no, there isn't a separation. We was just walking the natural way and you fucked off with the government. And did all the government's bidding. Now there's millions of people going in the wrong direction. And you think that's the right direction. When actually doing nothing was the answer. We weren't born with masks. We weren't born with needles in our arms. We weren't born with, a, 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 you know, with all of the bullshit that we've got today. And we've got to talk about it and deal with it. But no, I think people think that it's a democracy. We just vote. We vote for what we want. We trust our government to vote for what we want. Well, look where it's getting us. Look where the fuck it's getting us. And I don't care about politics. I'm talking about you and you and you and you and your mind and your way you make decisions. Because, you know, I'm only seeing fucked up lives. I'm seeing fucked up relationships. I'm seeing fucked up people who live, like, separated from one another. We used to be a tribe. We used to be there all the time. Old people didn't need some kind of, like... Uh, emergency buzzer so that the, the ambulance had come because they'd have to just sh shout from one TP to the other. You say, oh, I'm glad I'm not living in teepees. Well, I tell you what, I'd rather live in a, in a, in a circle of teepees or tents or yurts. You know, I'd rather live in a, in, in, in a circle of, 
of um, tents with friends than be sitting in a, 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 a brick building alone with the internet. This is where we've landed, isn't it? You know, I don't know if we can change our lives because, like, the, the, the land... You, you, there's no way, you know, we've seen this before with people trying to live off the grid, trying to find somewhere to live. But wherever they choose, the land, as I'm sitting there, I'm the government, that's my, you know, there's always some fucker owns the bit of land that you want to, like, try and live off the grid with. And you go to an island and they'll probably then, like, laser beam it. Now, I don't know if any of these conspiracy theories are true, but there's a lot of information to, to support the fact that they are true. Now, if you was to say all of that information could be fake, the same goes for the... Exactly the same principle goes for the mainstream media. Exactly the same goes for the... You know, people say, oh, yeah, but you can, you, you can fake statistics about the deaths. Yes, you can. You, yes, exactly. Now you're admitting it. It's like two fucking years too late and it's on the... Uh, it's, it's still biased advocating the government's argument for them, just because you're, you, you're scared of a, di a dictatorship, you're going for the democracy and believing everything they fucking say. When corona started, on Facebook, I said to people, careful, it's, it's hyped. And other people said, oh, oh, be careful, be careful, you're in, you, you, you'll fall into the Nazi thing. I said, well, no, uh, what's that got to do with Nazis? What's a virus and not wanting, you know, not like saying that a virus isn't as bad as you've been told. What's so Nazi about that? Oh, yeah, they, 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 you know, they're going to try and kill us by telling us not to, you know, just, oh, ignore the virus. <laughs> that old guy, you think, ignore her, ignore her. You know, I didn't do anything. I'd, I've, met, I, I've spent a lot of time around a lot of people. And in fact, I think that the, the shedding situation is something to be taken very into... You know, the arrogant fucks who, who take the jab and say, oh, yeah, you know, you shouldn't be allowed to, to work. Well, I think people are, are shedding all over the fucking place. But they're too unintelligent to get it. That's why I'm swearing and shouting and that, because I hope that people can get on this level what at least the energy... Like, fucking stand up and come up with the same energy if you haven't got the intelligence to stand up with. You know, I'm not talking about violence. Because it's obvious, isn't it? You'd have to be an idiot to think that violence was the answer. But we live in a society where people are, 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 are like, injecting themselves with, with poison on behalf of a government, forcing other people to do the same, and then coming to others and saying, they're the Nazis, they're the crazy ones, be careful of the right-wing party. How stupid have we become? And I don't, I really just don't care if people want to call me stupid. Do you, like, look at yourselves, and I'm not talking about anyone in particular, just let's all look at ourselves and just, I, I, I can ask myself, is this a good life? And I'd say, well, I can have a good, I can make a good life out of it. In fact, I'm probably the, one, one of the, the, the best people at making um, a good life out of a bad situation. And I'm sure a lot of you in the chat room know what I mean. You, you, you landed in hell and you've still got, like, you know, you've still got a, a marshmallow on, on the, t the toaster and you've still got like three strings left on your guitar. You're still keeping on keeping on and just that fact that you're still here is almost like wow you know we're still in the game still in the game you know like that like there's a lot of things that i can appreciate about life i don't need loads of money to buy stuff you know people are busy shopping i'm out there like looking at like like the, the sky you know <coughs> like Bob Ross, it's the, the same sky, a bit boring. But if you look at it, and look at it again, and you look at it and look at it, you think, fucking hell, that's actually pretty good quality picture. <laughs> you know, and it's, uh, you can feel it on your skin, and it's warm and stuff. It's not like a screen, is it? It's like, oh, you get exciting Transformers Superman images on the screen. But, you know, what, what use is that? When, when the, half the senses are missing. Now, I'm not having a go at, um, at uh, 
at computers or media or technology or whatever. But what I am having a go at is that like a shift in perception that, that has turned t- turned nature into something more boring and mundane compared to, to technology. And I think technology is driving us fucking crazy. Anyway, I like to have a run. I hope it's um, I, I hope it's uh, fine for you lot. Um, I like to hear uh, people having a bit of a, a, a raising the voice on on things that they're passionate about. You know, and like I, I, I've, I've experienced since the beginning of the Corona is just people think they know better. I don't claim to know better. I'm sure none of you in the chat room claim to know better. But you just, you really just, you know, you've got your own way of living and that's how it always was. And then suddenly the government comes along, tells the people what to do and they think they thought it. And then they start telling you that you're stupid. I really can't put it in words. And I need to. I need to put it in German words. I need to stand on a stage and I need to, to, to like, tell the people what I think. It's not about me, is it? But I'm, go- I'm the one who's like, I have to stand up there. I'm the one who has to, to, to take the fucking shots. And I hope that people in the audience appreciate that there's like people trying to mediate here. Because we've got two, two sides that are getting ex- pulling further and further and further, like a tug of war from left to right. Anti-left, anti-right, 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 anti-Nazi, and, you know, anti for. Yeah, I'm going to play a tune because uh, I guess it's uh, I've ranted quite a bit and it's 10 minutes. <laughs> I've got until 10 and then I'll, I'll check in the chat room. Hello there, Mr. Smith. It is good to hear your passion, Steve. Our lids are rattling <laughs> with the pressure. Steam has to be released. Yeah, and I think, you know, by seeing someone else have a good shout, you think, yeah, yeah, you know, that like, you've done it for me. You know, sometimes I don't have to have a good shout if I hear somebody else shout what I, what I wanted to say. So I think I've been smoking a little bit too much, you know, um, as you can hear from my voice. <coughs> or is there some kind of virus going around? Like I said before, I've been feeling kind of psychedelic this week I'll get a little bit more into that um, yeah I think I'll play a little cover a little cover song Fuck it, let's uh, let's play let's play this one. Broken hearted people living in 
There is still a light that shines on me Shine up till tomorrow, let it be I wake up to the sound of music Mother Mary comes to me Speaking words of wisdom, let it be Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Oh yeah. <clears throat> when we when we were young and the world was an open book you used to say live and let live you know you did, you know you did, you know you did and in this ever changing Yeah, that was indeed the Live and Let Die by Paul McCartney, I think. Yeah, pseudonym, whatever. Um, Live and Let Die. James Bond movie. Yeah, James. <laughs> James Bond. The word James Bond, even. You know, I, I talked about it ev probably every, <laughs> nearly every week since the beginning of the mystery show. Caught up on the point of Jacob. And if you know the biblical thing about Jacob and the birthright... Stealing the birth, like you know, tricking Esau out of the, the the birthright to his land. Stole it with a bowl of lentils. Lentils is uh, indicative of lenses and eyes that we may see, may learn what our mistake was, giving up our birthright. And birthright is like bond, isn't it? Bond, a bond, a bond with the. Um, yeah, I won't go into it. Bond, it, like a birthright, is a bond. So James Bond is like Jacob, but Jacob's birthright, and it's something that uh, I think we've all given up. We've all sold the little Jacob in, his, in us all has been renamed to Israel to struggle with God until we get that struggle sorted out. Started out. We don't have our birthright. We don't have our James Bond. But um, you know, all these little. Clues lead us in that direction, don't they? I wonder if... Just a nice, a nice last little, little tune. I don't really know what fret it is. And what's it called? Um, what's the band called without giving the game away? No, that isn't the name of the band without giving the game away.
so I've quite, c collected quite a lot of songs that I've been playing over the over the years on this uh, this show. was uh, Radio Ed with No Surprises. Interesting little song, really. Um, 
very subtle and, and like and it, and it kind of comes to you doesn't it it kind of creeps upon you your opinion <laughs> Okay, let's have a little bit of a look into the, into the, the, onto, into, out to, up to, chat room. I'm just going to scroll back a little bit, and, uh, I need, hello to the Spanish chicken, <laughs> how's it going mate? I need a tune called Cunts. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to remember that other one. Um, I've even forgotten it. What What was it? I, I, if I've forgotten it, I guess that's a good thing. Boris Johnson is a fucking cunt. <laughs> that was the song name. So yeah, that's uh, is up down there. I can't see chat on Rumble or YouTube if I watch the, the day after, but obviously you can. Yeah, weird. Steve self-identifying as a what is that? A, a learned cunt. <laughs> Proper nice. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, nice one. I appreciate the the, the, the feedback. I mean, I'm you know, you know I don't because I, I like to get a little bit of feedback. You know, it's like you go, you go shopping and you get you get a new shirt. It's how does it look from the back? You know, and you like you need your mates. It's not like oh, I I look the best out of us all, but it's like you know, I, I, I how do I look like sort of thing? You know, and it's it's good to get that kind of feedback because I'm I'm really not trying to I'm not trying to achieve anything really. I think the planet needs to start achieving something. I'm I'm sick to the shit of trying to achieve something. I've got my marbles together. I enjoy my life. The only problem with my life is, you know, the people around you are, are like psychotic. You just don't realise it. You know, they're in this hamster wheel of madness. They read books about spirituality all the time. It's like, okay, we know we're in a hamster wheel of madness, but when someone like an individual like Steve comes along and tells us, it's like, well, what do you know? You know, well, you read a book about it. I don't really read that much many books, but I, I think a lot, and I see the information in books, and I think, well, you know, that's what the Dalai Lama said, that's what Eckhart Tolle is preaching. You're buying books, 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 books. But I'm telling you it, and you're not listening to me, and it's in all of your books as well. You know, it's like I, I'm, I'm your living word. And not you now, just hypothetically, to the person who stood in front of you. You know, you're a, a flesh and blood. They've got the opportunity to ask you what you what you on about. What you on about with masks? Well, they're crap. They just make you ill. No, they don't. I saw it on TV. <laughs> My opinion, uh, shitting has not affected me. I am surrounded by vaxxed. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I've. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I have to be careful what I'm saying here. Um, I've got a lot more experience than the average person. Uh, I've got a lot more, uh, like, you know, with, with other people around me. I've got a massive, massive um, group of people around me. And well, basically, you know, the, like, you're able to do, like, regular blood checks and stuff on spike proteins and things like that and see people's conditions, monitor conditions, um... I'm struggling to find the English words, and I'm also struggling to to, to, to not be censored, 
or be targeted or shit like that. You know, people would be giggling, thinking, oh, yeah, he's got something really amazing to say. Well, I won't be saying it because it'll be censored. And so it's it's like a, a forced ignorance upon us. Um, but to be quite honest, I think shedding is a very, very real concern. If I had a child, I wouldn't bring that child near a person who was, who was freshly vaccinated. Um, I personally, myself, don't like fear so and i don't like se separation so i'm not the type of person to, to to worry about it even if i thought that it was true i'd just fucking just deal you know i just my immune system will have to deal with it i'm not gonna keep myself away from people even if they made a foolish mistake you know they might like ostracize me cancel me or whatever because i'm just not like um i'm not conform that's it, you know, if you're not conform. But I'd say, you know, th th there seems to be a lot of turbo cancers popping up, turbo illnesses, and it's it's disgusting that people are just denying it. It's almost like they're just protecting the, like, protecting a, 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 a totally sick principle in the form of government. But at the same time, we know it's a big game, so it's like, okay... We need less people on the planet. Let's make everybody weaker, so that we, you know, that 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 kills people off. Um, I don't panic about stuff, so I'm not like not here to like panic about things. But um, I think definitely is there's issues with shedding, but there's definitely more issues with the vax. You know, with blood tests, you can see the amount of spike proteins from from like a one go or two go or three go or four go you can see the difference and there's a lot of people with a lot of turbo illnesses anybody denies it is just is just in my opinion needs to really just wake up just needs to wake up because you've got absolutely no authority to to make that claim other than that you've watched television to be honest with or you've got you know a group a group of friends and it's it, it's fine i'm not like you know, somebody might have been had five goes. See, I can't even talk properly. Fucking hell, I could smash the camera right now out of protest, but it wouldn't do any good. That's why we need to re meet in real life. You know, everybody's become kind of like dubious about real life when internet's driving us insane. Um, you know, but it's like a form of gaslighting when people denying that the... the, the the dangers of these medicines that uh, are pretty much coerced on people. And so what's the point in having a democracy or a dictatorship? What's, what's the argument if you're just going to take a shot? It doesn't matter if it's the dictatorship or the democracy that, 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 that psycho gaslights you into doing things. You know, it's a, what would you call it, Dem democracy, a psychotic democracy. Like in Germany, you've got the problem is like they don't they don't want the Nazi party to get in. They don't want the party that's that's far right to get in because they're scared of a Gewalt hair shaft. Um, what would that be? A dictatorship. But to me, and probably a lot of you, we live in a dictatorship. We're told what to think. It's not we're told what to do, but we're told what to do to think, and everybody does what. They think, they think. Steve, fuck them, stay with your own mate. I gave up years ago trying to get people to look and see what book is going on. I haven't really got an own mate, to be honest, Dinny. You know, I wish anybody who's got like a little group of friends to, to stick with that group of friends, but I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I've never been that kind of person. I'm, I'm a, a nomad. I move around. I always have, you know, that's what I'm doing in Germany. I'm, I've lived in so many different houses, so many different places, and met so many different people and, and got involved in one person, you know, one person's circle of friends for, for a year or five, you know, and then moved to somewhere else and got involved in that, you know, and in a different way because of like the music and because of combining people. The, the network's been growing all of these years. And for me to sort of just sit back and, and try and find a group that I'm happy with and stay with them, even that's not possible, really, because the people who go around me are going to... Uh, uh, 
under the same amount of madness that I am, you know. To a degree, I could imagine, like, uh, battening down the hatches and making it to the end of my life, but that's, you know, I, I, I'm a sportsman, in a way, you know. To me, it, like, telling the, like, telling the truth in the face of, of, of lies is like a sport, isn't it? It's like base jumping or, or paragliding or whatever. And like years ago, I used to think if we all stand up and, and uh, like rise and wake, awaken and that, we can change the world. I think there's a possibility, but over the years I started to think, well, what if, that, if the majority never wake up? I need to find a, a method for myself and then anybody else who wants to listen can get that method. And that's why I talk a lot of, uh, over the years about the fact that the legal system's not what we, we're told. And the fact that it is, a, it is like a game. And that we shouldn't be scared or, or, or focused on the, on the legal system as, as if it was some kind of satanic force, you know, but it's... Um, not in my, in my case. I mean, I don't know how it, how it is for different people. I feel a form of a psychological pressure. But we see that. You can you turn on the internet and it's all like... Ga it's like gaslighting everybody individually. You get adverts that are tailor-made around your taste. And no wonder we start like living in, in like these echo chambers of our own creation. But it's not really our own creation because it's just been chosen for us. You know, what did you dream? We, it's all right, we told you what to dream. <laughs> and I care for you. Watch out you don't turn it into stress, that's right. I think it's not bad to... You know, like sometimes I, it's nice to get a, a cushion and shouting, ah! you know, and then like, let go. Or go running or let out the energy somehow. I think it is really important to, to not bottle things up because that gets worse. But it is important to not have stress. Stress is the, it's probably worse than the, than the vax. <laughs> you know, stress is probably the one of the biggest killers. And... We all get stressed from time to time, and it, we can all feel the illnesses creeping up on us when we get stressed. It's very true. Um, I spend a lot of time with spiritual, like people who are, a lot of people are spiritual, sort of like looking at different things like meditation and ceremonies and energy healing, these types of abstract things which... Yeah, I've got time for that. That's that's nice. It's a nice, nice approach. Um, but sometimes it's more about healing than preventing the, the the harm in the first place. And I spent a lot of time looking at the principle of healing, like in music, like healing. You know, music just used to be an amusement, entertainment, in my mind, until I realised, yeah, it, it it constitutes healing, but it also constitutes. Um, what's the word? Fighting? Preventing? Protecting? You know, like, every day you need to go to a healer. The healer would ask, well, why do you come every day? Why don't you stop getting damaged? Why don't you stop the harm that's happening to you? You know, maybe like a child comes home from school and the bullies beat him up and take his dinner money and the kid gets home and and the wounds get bandages on and the next day the child comes home more wounds it's like oh this is we're healing we're healing 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 but never actually sort of go into the to, to, to the, the, the the cause of harm Never finding the cause of harm, you know, that's one of the, the, the dangers about that aspect of healing is, you know, you can get into this, this thing like, oh, you know, healing is great, and al almost beguiling or, or, 
want, wanting people with illnesses to come so they can be healed. You know, almost like healing becomes a sport, where to me it's, it's more like let's stop the need for healing. I mean, heal means whole, doesn't it? To be whole, to be complete again, holistic. Essentially, if you're in the right situation, the body heals itself to a large degree. Of course, we can need each other's healing. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Yeah, I always choose a bit of a, a funny time. I mean, I don't know, is this a good time to do a show even? Or, you know, would it be better on a Saturday afternoon where I can yell my head off? Nice one, sing along. Yeah, I was just reading that, that, that um, being involved in your own body makes you understand a woman. I think you understand, just understand humans as well, really, you know, a bit like understanding yourself helps to understand other people. You're right, James. They'll, they're like, you're thanks. To, yeah, I love the rant, but um, they, they won't get it, um, sadly. And it, 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 I guess it's sad. Um, but for me, it's the fact that, and the day may never come, and I'm fine with it. But I'm scared there comes a day where I'm, I've got, the, like, I, I, I've got the opportunity to 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 say something that one person may get. You know, I'll be stood on a stage with 10,000 people in the audience and I can say something and because there's 10,000 people in the audience and because I've got the microphone and because I've got everybody's attention that what I say will cause some kind of rapture or rupture, what is it? <laughs> like some form of domino effect in the audience because it does, you know, like, ind like individuals with no popularity don't get anywhere. We're, we're talking about a reality by popularity. That's why the television's always right, because a lot of people watch it all individually. And they go to work the next day, and the last thing they've got on the mind is that box. So there's no uh, real, true solidarity. But I'm a musician, and I think the musicians have got the, the, the duty to, to deliver some reason. And I think I'm disgusted with, like, musicians. Okay, okay I can understand now. Yeah, I'm not disgusted. So I'll take that back. But there's a lot of celebrities, isn't there? Like they're called musicians. You know, if somebody's a really virtuo, good mu virtuoso, good musician, that it, you could just sit down, like they play piano, say, and they're playing the most beautiful piece of music. I don't expect them to, like, you know, shut the lid at the end and say, right, Biden's a knobhead, <laughs> you know. Uh, but we're in the rock and roll business here. We're rebels, you know what I mean? We should be, like, standing up. It's like it's not like, rock and roll rebel. Now listen to the government. They know best for you. You know, it's absolute twatty, isn't it? It's absolute twatty. And people who, like, the celebrities, they're not, like, the, he, he, you can't really call them virtuosos, can you? No offence to Britney Spears, but she's a choreographer, personality celebrity who, who sings like an average schoolgirl, and then all of the technology and uh, entourage and, and, and industry that surrounds her makes her look like a goddess. Um, Britney Spears is one example, but it goes for every celebrity, really. There's very few talented, really talented musicians that are in the spotlight. You would say, oh yeah, there's loads of singers and stuff, but there's loads of really, really good singers that you never get to see. And then there's like loads of quite good singers that you always only ever see. I mean, I don't know about Miley Cyrus or what she called, but, you know, I see these names floating all around the time and I'm not ever really impressed.
So for me, the mystery show, to be honest, the mystery show is, is about like me keeping on the ball because of the day that comes, the, the day that comes where I've got a massive stage, I want, I want to say something. If nothing's been said, I, d I don't want to wake people up. I just want to say something. I just want to say something that people are too scared to say because I hate that. I hate the fact that we have like this censorship democracy. This censorship democracy is just, it's just driving us all mad. This is one of my major concerns, is not even politics, but the, the fact that the technology itself will drive us mad before we've even finished. You know, WhatsApp and Facebook and Twitter and the bing and bing, la la la. You know, all these, like, you, you can't sleep if you don't turn the thing on to flight mode. It's like Las Vegas, bang, bang, notification, you know. It's going to drive us absolutely nuts. And so for me, like, you know, having the, these, this chat room and stuff is I'm able to, able to practice the big day, I suppose. I'm able to, like, get stuff off my chest and get a reaction. I'm not saying it's... Um, it's a trustworthy reaction even. But for me, you know, I can, I'm talking to a real life audience now. You know, if I say the wrong thing, it's already out there. Um, so it means that I, I start to really observe myself. You know, I often think about porn stars. You know, I think in a way it must be something quite liberating to just get your kids off and show people your stuff, you know, because like everyone's got one of two, two, two bits, you know, two pieces. And I think it's respectful to, to you know, to, to dress ourselves well and, and not walk around like, you know, perverts or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, the, we're all like human animals, aren't we? And there's not that much difference between one or the other human being, you know. Um, and it's like the same with speech, you know, people go up on stage and like struggle to speak because, you know, they have an embarrassment of saying the wrong thing, you know, and it's like to be almost like a verbal porn star, you know, where you just like get your, your, your verbal kit off and just just speak with the idea that like if it... It's none of anyone else's business what I speak. They can listen. You know, I mean, it's like if, if you if you think of like pornography or whatever, there's two people making love <laughs> or whatever, or having having physical sex, and the whole world's maybe watching. You know, and I mean, obviously, like the voyeurism or um, what do you call it, um, exhibitionism. Exhibitionism. Um, there's an aspect to, to that there, but the, like you know, people are not going to exactly be able to change much about the way they they do things just because there's one or a million people watching. And it's the same with words. There's not a lot you can do with you know. There's only 26 letters of the alphabet. So if you're going onto a big uh, onto a big stage or just to one person or whatever. Like, I think it's easier talking to a million people than it is to talking to one or two people. Because they feel that they'll take it, obviously take it personally. And this is the problem, it's like, you know, like... In the context of friendships and families and stuff, that is the awesomely hard thing to, to do is to talk to people it's very easy for a celebrity to talk anonymously over a screen to millions of people actually it's very easy very easy to stand on a stage you know big big stage Wembley Stadium stage stuff because you're talking to the only thing you've got to worry about is like getting dragged off the stage by by the FBI or you know some interest group somebody chucking something at you or shooting you from the back Whatever, you know, them risks are, are always there for every... You know, people get a, a sabotaged all the time for doing nothing. So, like, you know, it's better off getting sabotaged for doing the biggest you can. Um, yeah. 
they've got no struggle with Israel. This is the interesting thing. Come on, Spanish, you haven't been listening, have you? <laughs> yeah, you have. Um, every nation is Israel. I don't, I don't think people like to hear that. Every nation is Israel. Because Israel itself isn't Israel, is it? Like the biblical Israel is uh, not the modern-day Israel. And so we're talking about a concept. We're talking about nations. And, like, look at it. Look at Israel. Okay, it's, it's a little bit strange now, but look at every nation. You know, you've got a separation there. I know it's not compar comparable in, in, in the way of Palestine and, and Gaza and stuff. But you can see that same struggle with God. You know, because like the fact is, is like if people are like looking at um, the government as being the highest source of authority on the planet, then, then the, there's a form of godlessness going on. Now, we don't have to all collectively form together and create a God that we all agree on. You know, it's already been done. We already know God, ex like, like the idea or construct of God or creator or the universe or the nature source or whatever. We know that that's there. We know that we didn't create ourselves. We know that we didn't inv create trees. So we know that some force created it. Call it illusion. Call it big fucking bang. You know, like, why, why do we, you know, why do we have to sabotage the idea that consciousness was actually maybe even there before matter? And that our consciousness is a part of the, the, the universal consciousness. You know, these, these ideas make much more sense. Because, like, creation comes from, from, from above to below not the other way up, you know, the, the Luciferian principle is that it comes from the television screen up to your head. Backwards. But, I mean, it's late, yeah, just reading the chat room, it is true. When we're not living in Gaza or Palestine, or we don't actually get those struggles. But I think, in a way, we get them at a distance, don't we? It's, it, it, it's like, almost difficult to just shut them out. Even psychologically, there's a, a Palestine in the mind. Any happy tunes? Just wondering, what, like, what, what, like, happy tunes... I mean, like Frank Zappa does a lot of happy tunes, but they're actually cynical, aren't they? I have got some happy tunes. No one deserves them, mate. No one deserves them. <laughs> no one, no one deserves amusement. I don't know. I got to admit, sometimes I, I'll just talk rhetorically. You know, I think it's fine to to lift the mood with music, and not deliver some kind of. Life doesn't have to revolve around a message. You know, maybe at the end of the day, you know, I'll, I'll do this big gig, you know, there's a million people there, and I play a song, and, and that it's like, well, yeah, the song without words did it. And we listen to Great Gig in the Sky on Dark Side of the Moon by you know, Pink Floyd. You know, that, wo that female singer brings you to tears. Or Claire de Lune by Debussy, played on piano. Or even Ode to Joy, Beethoven's Ninth, with Friedrich Schiller's lyrics plastered over the top, pushed as a new Europe hymn. So it's time to have a little smoke with the ancestors. I'll just flick away from the, uh, the, the, the chat room. I like to just... At the beginning of, of, of tonight's broadcast, I thought I'd take some time, talk really slowly, enjoy. Because, like, our media is so racing, it races all the time, trying to get in more and more information. I think we should really look at, like, you know, leaving spaces between things, stopping the world.
you know, getting used to just having a little bit of what broadcasters would call dead air. But it's not dead, is it? It's alive. It's alive with your own thoughts. A television. And since the beginning of the, inten the invention of the television, it's been getting more intense. And you can you can watch an old TV series like Cat Weasel. You know Cat Weasel. Watch an episode of Cat Weasel and, and look how long one scene, one cam, what like one camera take is. The cameras are set up so that you can see the boy through the window walking down the lane and then you can see him walk to the door and then the camera will pan around. You see him coming in the door and he'll pan across to the table and he'll set the table and mother will come across and it'll zoom out. But it's still the, the same shot. Still, it can be maybe like a minute or two minutes, the same camera angle, same shot. Nowadays, you've got four seconds, two seconds, half a second shots. It's too much, it's too much, it's like creates an epilepsy. <laughs> In any case, I wanted to have a smoke with the ancestors and leave that, uh, what broadcasters would call dead air, but it's not dead, it's filled, filled with a hundred thousand angels. I'm going to smoke with this little pipe with the ancestors I think of Tony I used to see Tony's like uh, messages in the chat room non-violent extremist and Tony had known, known you know on, online for a lot of years and it was always there. It gave me a reinsuring feeling. You know, if I was to stand on a, a, a stage and get that chance and be on worldwide television coverage, Tony would be there in, in me. And Krishna Krishna would be there. People should ask themselves why they think I'm crazy or why they think I'm just airing my opinions or things like that. People should really ask that question, really even more than listen to what I'm actually saying. To actually say, why is he saying that? Is he trying to change the world? No, I don't think so. I don't know. If I was trying to change the world, I'd probably, I'd probably use methods. But I'm not using methods. We're not using methods. We're just observing and then re relaying. Hello there, Moscow snake. It's all mental these days. Yeah, it's all mental. It's all Israel. <laughs> you know, it's all mental. It's like a, a struggle of, with God, you know, because, like, if it's all mental, then it's not God, is it? You know, so the, the question is, what is, what is God? You know, how do I find God? Where Where is God? Is it he or she, or is it a principle, or is it just a, a concept? Is it just an idea, like the word time? I have three o'clock. Without, you know, without the words, we maybe never meet. Without villages. You know, the, the nature's wonderful, but if you wanted to go from one village to another, if there was no signposts, how would you even know you were there if you'd never been there before? 
So everything is like a, a sign, isn't it? It's like leading us somewhere. So the same as the word God, it's like he's leading us somewhere. And we, the more we think about it, the more we realise it's not what you think. It's not a thought. It's, it, it's, it's much, much bigger and more, more like universal than that. It is funny how the world is upside down, yeah. It is incredibly funny. Let's make it a, a little bit bigger. Um, recommend, uh, let's just get the, uh, yeah, there we go. Recommend Heuser, is that a Hauser or Heuser? Hauser, Wicked Games. I think you chaps would enjoy the video. Music wouldn't be music without the intervals of silence. Yeah. 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 One of my favourite quotes, I think it's from Frank Zappa, or it could be it could be from is it Edgar Vares? And Zappa was into Edgar Vares, I think it was. Um he says What something is depends on when it is more than anything else. What something is depends on when it is more than anything else. It be I find interesting because if you look at it like a piano, it's got how many keys on it? I don't know, 80 odd keys. And It's the order which you play them, it's when you play them, isn't it, that, 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 that makes all the difference. And then the, 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 the silence is between, and it's not a, a moment, a freeze frame of a moment. Music cannot be like a photograph. And this is, I think this is maybe the, the, the fix or the, the trick with the optical side of life, with the Lucifer principle, is that we have the ability of taking a photograph of reality and it's not just a, an image it's almost like if you was to to, to say oh I'm just trying to think of a fictitious name <laughs> you know like okay Donald Trump <laughs> it's like what is Donald Trump like or what does Donald Trump do well obviously he's go he goes to sleep and goes for a shit like us all unless he's a cyborg or whatever you know but whatever whatever Donald is doing he's not a freeze frame image is it it's not you can't say oh Donald Trump is and then like put a label on it in that way because that takes away the the the, the process of, of things you know what I mean it's like it's impossible to freeze frame a song it's impossible to freeze frame a song, but it's it's easy to freeze frame images. But the, the thing is, we are on the one side when we when we can freeze frame stuff, then our mind becomes more object oriented. Whereas when when we seeing something as a process then we're aware of the procedure you know like for example somebody says something to you one day a friend is like out of context we often try and resolve the situation like oh don't go now we need to sort that out you know as if like we're, we're living in a photograph that we need to like kind of manipulate this photograph back to the photograph we like rather than saying well it's a, it's a, it's a flow isn't it it's a song and this is, it's an album, it's a, it's a, it, it, you know, it's like going from one song to another. So like, now, the song's changed, but you know, there's still time left on the record. 
at least I mean I, I do generally like to, to to depart from people with a, a good a good vibe because I never know if it's the last time I've seen somebody. So I've learned to try to to try, to, you know, even if you're like angry with someone about a topic or whatever, you know, really from human to human, there's no reason to have all of those barriers by at a departure. But at the same time, you wouldn't say, oh, bye, oh, I'll never see you again, <laughs> you know, because you don't know. So every time, you know, someone leaves the house, I love you, I love you too, and it's like, okay, if that was the last time, then we said, I love you. I mean, you, you, you'd even just know it anyway. But um, but to, to kind of always be aware that it's a process, you can have patience, can't you? You can say, well, I don't need to solve that problem today. You know, there'll be another time. And it's not procrastination. I hate that word procrastination because it forces people to try and do everything now all at the same time. And then to try and wrap it up logistically. So, right, we need to do everything right now, but what's the best thing to begin with? You know, it's, it's almost like we're freeze-framing eternity. Because we know time doesn't really exist, but we're, not, we're also equally not a freeze-frame reality. I don't know why I'll scroll down. Oh, come on. You can't just jump like that. Yellow donuts. <laughs> don't eat the don't eat the yellow donuts. Yeah, Krishna and Jason. There's so many on on the list really. I mean Jason didn't really um, come in my chat room that much, to be honest. I watched his shows and I, I, I liked that, but with all, with all due respect, you know, Tony and Krishna um, spent a lot of time with me, sort of like here in the chat room with us in, in, this, in this context, you know, and I could mention a lot of people like Jeff C, but Jeff C, I don't know if Jeff C ever came in the chat room, Probably didn't know if my channel was on. I didn't push it in anyone's face, and there's absolutely no animosity. Everyone go where they like. I just, you know, in the chat room here, we had Krishna, 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 Chris, and um, Tony were the people that, you know, who gave me quite a bit of encouragement and also spent a lot of time here and. Uh, but of course, there's so many. There's so many others. Yeah. <laughs> An open panel. Like, you mean, have guests on the show or something, you know. I, I, like I say, I, I don't know, sometimes, you know, I, I, I was, I've been thinking about things. Where, um, me and Pete was on about doing a, a show in German. I'd still really like that because that would be also good for me. I mean, I always look for my something that's of an advantage to myself, even though it's just like the, the, the experience or the practice. Uh, there is a stereo echo. <laughs> Just looking into the, the thing about stereo. I could actually get stereo working at some point. So you, I mean, it is a stereo signal.
and when's Paula doing another show? But to be honest, I've, I've had a busy week and I've, I've, I need to catch up with the other shows. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll have a little bit of an advert. Um, yeah, we're, already at, like, we're already done in nearly two hours. Lady Hosen Special. Before any of that, I'd like to to do to to, to plug our sponsors for tonight. <laughs> for all of your localized pain reduction needs. Buy yourself some of Not A Doctor, Dr. Roberts, Salve. Please find the links in the description below. Thank you. Yes. So Mr. Smith will also be um, uh, playing some drums, not just playing drums, <laughs> um, but yeah, but broadcasting, broadcasting, yes, broadcasting a stream at 11 a.m. in England, uh, which will also you'll also see on the on the following weekly show lineup. <laughs> Yeah, 11 o'clock tonight, tonight, that's two nights. I hope to see you there if I don't fall asleep before, because it's an hour later here, yeah, but I usually tune in and uh, have a listen through my headphones and try and keep up with the chat. Um... There you go, just stop oil. Um, that's what happens when you try and stop oil. Yet. <coughs> Excuse me. It's crazy the madness that's uh, causing caused on the planet, isn't it? The, the 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 fear of the the apocalypse or whatever. Like the light at the end on the other side of the wall. I've got another one, another video to, to play, and I think I'll use that as a, a, a an outro video. Um, a song that I, that I wrote, Where Do We Start When We Find Ourselves in the Middle. And thankfully, Starfish Troopers podcast Pete, Lowlands Pete, put a lovely, uh, lovely visuals to it. And, and, it, and I'm really grateful. At first it was just nice for me. It was nice to, to see some, somebody else add a, a part to that creation. And, and then to see other people get the chance to, to, to see it. And today a, a friend said, Hi, I love the video that you made. Oh yeah, it's Pete. Pete made it. And it's lovely. It's lovely. It's just brilliant. Um, 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll let that run and I'll wrap things up here. I'll locate the, the, the big button and everything, got the chat room open. Maybe at the weekend I get a chance to uh, come on a little bit earlier and bang out some tunes. I really enjoy that. Uh, I enjoy talking on a Thursday and I enjoy chucking in a, a few tunes just to calm myself down, <laughs> uh, bring it down to a level. And uh, we're, here we are around the post-apocalyptic burning barrel oil can drum under the bridge. All sat around discussing philosophy and in the world thanks a lot uh, and greetings to made in the UK PLC greetings to anybody who's watching there's a lot of people who watch who don't uh, enter the chat room and they're, they're always in my in my mind or in my awareness also Rumble and Odyssey so maybe you can give it a little bit of a like or whatever you feel like doing and I will leave this little 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 tune with video. I, I, I hope you can hear it all right. If if not, then write in the chat room something's going wrong, and I'll restart it. Um, thanks ever so much to everybody. Thanks for keeping me a little bit saner as well, <laughs> you know. And uh, thanks to everybody doing the other shows because that keeps me sane. I think we, I think we, uh, you know, in in some ways we we can have hope that there's we we can we can see things maybe changing. Maybe some haven't got hope. I, I do. Sometimes I lose hope. Sometimes I have hope. Um, for me, it's like I say, it's an adventure. It's a, it's like being in a part of a movie, and I'd like to somehow achieve an happy a happy end. So with that in mind, a happy end is uh, a song from me and a video with from Pete thanks a lot see you soon Feels like a game with no aim. 
And you know that you're on the place to go And you all the time Knowing that you're always Good. 